Uh, we have Ben Schoenbrunn on the left, more commonly known as Benji, and Matthew Lambeau O'Connor. I bet you he's going to make a play here within 20 seconds. What do you think, Austin? Yeah, he should. Um, yeah, there's not too many words that he actually has on his rack, so it'll be interesting to see what he is going to play here. Um, he could just exchange everything except the ZE. That's also another option. Um, so maybe there's a bit more to think about here. Oh, wow. What did he Did he just exchange? Uh, what did he exchange? Whoa, what was that? He exchanged <laughs> OU and is keeping A-E-I-O-Z. Oh, that, wait, no, that no, he, is, exchanged, uh, he exchanged two U's. Oh, he exchanged U-U. Well, he yeah, kept, kept A-E-I-O-Z. Uh, that may be the first time that move has ever been uh, played in uh, <laughs> tournament Scrabble history. That is deeply unorthodox. But the Z does love... Um, uh, the Z loves vowels, so I can kind of see why he did it. And... Ben responds right away with Feike, uh, abiding by the age-old principle of play off the points with the high point values on them. Got the FKY out of there. Keeps a very, very strong AST lead. So uh, Ben totally unfazed by whatever Matthew's up to. Yeah, Feike is uh, statistically the best play uh, for Ben. Um, and yeah, we're going to have to be aware that both these players don't always... Uh, Put the tiles on their rack uh, in in the in necessary in the uh, easiest way for us to read. So, you know, to bear with that. But um, but yeah, it looks like Matthew has just played Oye for thirty six points, um, which actually is the best player here. Yeah, A E I T, uh, not the worst combo, and he's filled it in with consonants. So, it's sort of like that initial uh, beginning of the game blip is just kind of disappeared by the wayside. But you can see what Matthew was up to with that first play. So he kept Z-O-E-A, Zoia, uh, which uh, combines with a, a E, L, or S to make Zoia, Zoiel, Zoias. And that would be 48 points if you could get it down. And when your opponent exchanges tiles at the beginning, it's usually a sign of a very strong rack. So even though Ben played Feike in this instance, there was a fair chance that Ben was going to respond with an exchange of his own. So you can sort of see what uh, what Matthew was was thinking, that maybe he could have drawn a high-scoring Z play on a wide-open board. But uh, Ben, close to a bingo, but does not elect for a fishing play, and he's going to score some points instead. Yes, Habit actually is, again, statistically the best play here. 36 points, keeping ES. Uh, very good balance between score and leave. And uh, she doesn't really do too much to the board. It kind of blocks up that that lane that he's played um, played in, which kind of would score a lot of points. Um, but yeah, I think this is the standout play here. There's not too many uh, ways to... I mean, you could always just play bar, B-A-H, but it would only score 21. And that would be uh, next to the O of Oye. Um, but Habit scores 50 more points getting rid of the INT. I think it's definitely worth it here. Um, and yeah, another another top play from Ben. Yeah, good, good job there, not getting seduced too much by the prospect of a distant bingo and just making a solid scoring play that also happened to keep ES, which is a wonderful start to, uh, to next rack. So uh, sharp play on his part. Um, does Habit take any hooks, Austin? Does Habit take any hooks? Um, it does take an S, I believe. Uh, I think that's the only one. Um, so, yeah. Habitus, H-A-B-I-T-U-S, is a word, but it does not pluralize like other Latin words. So that's a an unlikely but possible trap here is that one of them tries to throw an I on Habit. Or at least Obviously. that's the kind of thing I would do. Maybe it's just, you know, maybe it's just my own. Uh, it's just a Jesse Day thing. <laughs> my own addiction to Latinate plurals. Truly a nerdy addiction, I must say. <laughs> um, so yeah, Matthew just played XI, one short of the triple. So it is um, it is slightly dangerous. It could give away a number of points, uh, putting the S on the end of XI. Um, but again, statically, it looks like it's the best play here for 32 points, uh, keeping um, 
B A T E R. This was pretty strong. Uh, another option potentially was to play Ibex next to the O of Oye, um, getting rid of the B as well for three more points. Um, probably something that I would probably play um, is probably something like Ibex. Uh, but again, not not necessarily a, a, a mistake or really a big mistake at all. Still a very, very solid play. If there's one thing we've learned about Matthew from that last game is he is absolutely no fear. Uh, so he he will do highly volatile stuff. Also, yesterday's game with the div play that we're still talking about. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he will do, he is uh, just absolutely fearless. He will do, if he thinks it's the, the right statistical play, he'll do stuff that looks really risky. So fair play to him, putting X high down, no fear. And I guess he's calculated that there's not that many words that go IS like that. And ah, another Egypt sighting. This is a favorite of our viewership. <laughs> yeah, that's a very strong play for 20, uh, 21 points. Um, again, the only downside is putting that second E uh, along that triple uh, triple word square. It can be very easily hit with a, a big tile. Although the J has been played, he just played the J. And also the Z and the X have both been played as well. So the only main other, other big tile you want to uh, you work out for is the Q, which isn't going to go with Q, E uh, next to each other. So it's probably not too, too bad in this situation. Um, keeps ILS, which is probably about as good as you could hope for in this case. Um, but again, another option potentially is to play Jetties. So J-E-T-E-S. Not it's opening any... Jete. Jete. Jete, there you should know. <laughs> uh, 40 points, but keeping I-I-L. So that would have been 19 more points, potentially giving away a little bit less. Um, probably something I would have done also, but... Um, you know, I always like to score points. I think that's been well documented um, around Scrabble. Never cycles. stop scoring. That's uh, <laughs> Austin's Austin's motto here. But Ben <laughs> has point. been rewarded with a very strong tile draw. I will say. Yes, that is true. Um, Bo, I guess, has come down. It's twenty-seven. It's pronounced Bo. Oh. Sorry, I had to give you credit for sometimes getting the French words right. So. <laughs> I know. I'm just going to keep saying things, and hopefully it's it's right. <laughs> so does Ben have a bingo here? Because uh, I'm quite, getting slightly worried that Bo may have... Uh, un oh, he does. He is saluting through the U. And that's the reason why we have Jesse Day on the stream for you guys, because saluting is the only bingo. It's the only playable bingo here. That that and making obnoxious uh, pseudo French uh, <laughs> comments. And yeah. Ben playing instantly. <laughs> yeah, he's spotted there. Wasn't much else. It's relatively quick uh, processing, and it's gonna pay off, Ben's going to be rewarded by having one more time later in the game to, to make other decisions. So fair play to him converging. Yeah, I should do a five bingos in Collins with uh, salting. Um, four of them end with ING, uh, one end with a T, so he couldn't hook onto the O of Oye. Uh, but he's exposed an S, and Matthew's going to waste absolutely no time getting realtors down, although... Relators might have been slightly safer, not putting the A next to a triple letter score, but that's a minor quibble. And we're off to another explosive start here. Play. And uh, yeah, we've gotten a substantial amount through the, the game, and they've each taken five minutes. So that's a, a sign of the crackerjack pace that they each want to proceed at. Because uh, Ben is no slouch in terms of uh, his ability to play fast as well. May he slow down a bit here because he doesn't have very good tiles. And he does have two W's, not an M. <laughs> he appears to be trying to transform one of his W's into an M. Exactly. That's uh, an unorthodox strategy. It usually doesn't pay off because your opponent notices, but <laughs> worth a try. I wonder if that's ever been happened before. <laughs> I've seen some wild things in my day. <laughs> Oh, Viewy. He's found Viewy and FY. That's going to score a lot. 
Oh, what a great way out of a jam. That's really nice. I had not come up with that yet. That's 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 really good. Yeah, Vui is the best play here. Also uh, blocks that R of uh, real the first R of Reuters, so you can't hit to the get to the triple word square. And also Vui does kind of do a, a little bit of a funny thing to the board. It kind of blocks off that top left part of the board now. So the only real way to kind of break out of this is through the O of Oyo. So we could end up seeing another kind of very blocked board here, especially with both of these players uh, with some clunky tiles uh, on their racks. Oh, the, the defense lovers are starting to get a little excited here. Yeah, so I think something like Veld here with the V uh, or Vui is um, actually probably the best play here. Uh, it actually was mentioned in the chat by Adam D. Um, so V-E-L-D-T uh, onto the V of uh, Vui uh, for 18 points. Uh, it gets rid of three of those consonants, although it does expend that vowel that he ha the only vowel that he has. So I think Veld is really the the play here. It scores a few extra points and keeps it keeps it uh, keeps it contained for now until he uh, gets a moment to to play something. But it looks like he's going for Delt. And yeah, Matthew heard you and he says, "Nope, not doing that." <laughs> it's, uh, almost a streak of contrarianism there. Although I presume he can't hear Austin. <laughs> uh, unproven whether he can or not, but yeah, he put throws caution to the wind and. Makes a little bit of an opening play. Uh, yeah, interesting, so decision. interesting, interesting move. Yeah, I mean, I probably would have played Velt, um, and I don't know if uh, the the X I hook for the S here might be something he's trying to kind of obscure a little bit. I mean, putting the E there still makes it relatively uh, straightforward to still play through, but um, maybe the fact that he doesn't have an S and um, there's easy points that could be scored there. Like, even if you could put like QIS or something, that would score like almost fifty points. Yeah, actually, QIS is not a totally improbable thing at some point. That, that's uh, that's well spotted. That seemed like a somewhat innocuous spot. But yeah, that risk is gone. And there's now a lower probability that we're heading towards another uh, closed board master class. <laughs> um, so Sean has um, spotted twerp here for, for Benji. And I think that's a really strong option. If I'm not mistaken, that would be 42 points. I think that's uh, given the that there's still a, a paucity of other scoring spots on the board. I think uh, if he spots twerp, he will play it quickly. But I'm not sure that he's seen it. Yes, that actually is the standout play here. There's nothing really coming close to it um, statistically. Um, other things that... Uh, um, slightly further down the list, uh, things like unwet um, and bide, which is actually the uh, the opening that uh, Matthew just opened up, uh, but it opens up the triple, or even playing like pew pw in that spot. So aside from aside from playing bide, there's not really too many other spots to play. Um, so that doesn't open up a triple uh, on that right side. So I think twerp is really the the best play here. I'm informed that I was actually being insulted by our viewership, and it wasn't a serious play suggestion. Uh, I'll let it slide this time. What else is he thinking about here? Wait, oh, it looks like he's grabbing the TW and the P. You might be thinking twip. Oh, interesting. 20 points. So he just didn't see. He didn't see twip, obviously. Um, but this is also kind of a blocking play, I feel, um, because that is the only, well, apart from the bid now, um, that O of Oye has kind of stayed open for a long time. And that actually would be the, probably the easiest place to land a seven letter bingo. Um, oh, he's he, taking it back. Again, maybe he's having second thoughts. Uh, Where's he this? going? He's Blue. playing Plu and keeping oh. it in yeah. Yep, you just didn't see twerp. As simple as that. I think if you see twerp, um, you play it pretty much straight away. Not easy to think of either, though. I mean, you probably wouldn't necessarily think of any any words ending with RP um, or, or any kind of four letter, a five letter ending with RP. So it's not easy. But I guess if you kind of told him there was a word there, he would see it pretty quickly. And we got a bingo coming down. This has been spotted by our uh, keen chat, which consists of many Scrabble experts right there. Uh, retinoid. Uh, with a couple of overlaps, nicely spotted. Um, and Retinoid 
speaking of uh, other insults that we can bandy at each other, uh, retinoid <laughs> takes a C in front for cretinoid. Yeah, in a vacuum, I suspect both players know that, but uh, there's always a difference between knowing the hook and seeing it in the game. So let's see if that... Uh, both Cs are unseen, actually, so let's keep an eye out and see if uh, cretinoid comes down at some point. Let's see if it happens. And he actually has douches in this rack, which would play there. But another another quick uh, quiz is what is the anagram to cretinoid? Uh, I'm uh, I got that one, but I'm leaving it for the for the chat to to come yes. up with. <laughs> direction, very nice. Yes, yes very good. Cretinoid That's... direction. Yeah, so Matthew does pick up the C. We'll end up seeing if he actually does obviously play that, but um, obviously right now it's on Ben's turn. He doesn't have very good tiles. Um, he's going to struggle to really score anything more than 20 points in this turn. There's not a great deal uh, that he can really do uh, with this rack. He's going to look to get rid of the AG and the U, which are three of his worst tiles on his rack. Um, so he could play something um, like uh, Togra onto the R of Realtors, which you just missed with Twa at the same spot, T-U-G-R-A. Um, if he feels a little bit more... Um, more punchy, he could go uh, go for Punga onto the P of Plu, P-U-N-G-A, opening the triple, or Ruga, making P-A in that same spot, going upwards instead, R-U-G-A. So those are kind of options that he can he can play. But all of those are all of the options that are coming up um, with the uh, with the engine are all trying to get rid of the G, U, and the A, um, and trying to get that next bingo. He is behind right now. He's behind by fifty. Oh, they're discussing something, aren't they? There's uh there's some pointing there's some some finger pointing. It, something's going on in the distance. Is there a skirmish? <laughs> no, I'm just I, I no no fighting in the Scrabble room. Is this the uh, Scrabble? <laughs> ben Benji seems unfazed by the violence in the background, and <laughs> I I think um, he's at a serious disadvantage. Twerp would have put him. A little more in scoring range, but fifty is a actually it's a pretty serious deficit, and he may be justified in being getting pretty aggressive here. I I wouldn't mind Punga uh, of the options that you mentioned. So now that he's at a deficit, he needs to be creating some some threats for himself because um, he needs some way of surmounting the the hill. It's not a cliff at this point, but it's definitely. It's definitely hilly for him from here. And Punga uh, would be a decent way of opening a, another quadrant of the board. Although it, everything will come with risk. And he's gone with Ruga. Is he going Ruga going down? He's a bit more of a defensive player. I feel like to see him play a bit more attacking here since he is trailing. And Ruga here doesn't really score too, too much either. So he's ended up blocking four of uh, four of those uh, very nice floating tiles um, in the top left corner, which I feel like he probably needs more than most. And at this moment in time, there's not that many places to bingo through. I mean, the most obvious or the easiest place is to play on the right side uh, next to bid. Um, oh, this actually isn't. Oh, okay. So it wasn't. Okay. So it wasn't. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't a, a blank. <laughs> I just thought it was a blank. Uh, one of the one of the tiles, but Ooh, actually does score very well here. Yeah. Very nice. He had time to dial that up on Ben's clock. Or Benji's under ten minutes here, so that's gonna the clock is going to be just as much of an adversary with with Benji's attempt to come come back from this lead. And notice that Matthews kept the C for himself, probably intentional. I suspect he knows Red Noise out there or the, the cretinoid hook is there. And he's, uh, one of the things when you have a lead is trying to minimize variance, guarantee yourself a steady flow of scoring plays so that you can just safely outrun whatever your opponent tries to concoct. And keeping that C for cretinoid is a nice way of, for Matthew to do that, where uh, he has a, a fair chance of, uh, he, he had a fair chance of being able to draw a good scoring play. Yeah, we might not see the C hook now because Eo, Eowyn, however you pronounce that, um, is actually the best play for Ben uh, currently. Uh, scoring 23 points, I think it's actually his highest scoring play. And it nicely gets rid of those duplicate tiles that he has in his rack. So um, he's in better shape now with the tiles that he has. 
but now a few moves has passed. He's not in a great shape to bingo because there's really no space to go. So um, we'll see what happens with Matthew now. If he decides to kind of block off that um, that bid hook, um, and if he does do that, there's really nowhere to go. Um, you have to end up playing. He's doing end. it. He's doing it. And Owen does not take an ass either. Oh, it does not take an ass, so he's actually blocking off the one and only uh, reasonable uh, bingo spot uh, on the board with Rock, and he's going to stay uh, about a bingo ahead. Um, so interesting uh, interesting moves here, and he's looking like he's going to set up sharp and uh, try and hold on to this lead for the rest of the game. Yeah, good call on Owers. Ower is not one who owes, as, as you might think. I believe it's some kind of... Uh... Shakespearean, Spencerian uh, variant spelling of over. Ah, but Benji's got Kanat here for 48, so all of a sudden he may not need a bingo at all. He He's actually just, uh, he's going to say, uh, you know what, my plan is to score lots of points. and But it is going to backfire because well, backfire is maybe not the right word. He has to do that, but Matty does have a U, and he's going to immediately score at that spot. So the the gains are going to be short lived. But uh, good for good for Benji trying to keep the pressure on. Benji has a huge rack of notices section, but as we've said, the board is very tight. I don't know where that's going to go. And he may have to get very experimental here with something like Doc on the on the right, setting up a a massive but extremely risky uh, bingo spot uh, yeah. because he's running out of time and options. And the thing is, uh, just like the last game that we saw, they're actually still both blanks are unseen. There's still two S's unseen from uh, from uh, Ben's point of view. So there's actually just one S that's been played on saluting. Um, so a whole host of uh, options potentially uh, with the S. Um, although you know uh, Matthew does not have any of those tiles, so it's. I mean, I know that Ben doesn't know that, but the S's, two S's and two blanks are still out there in the bag, and there's actually not that many tiles in the bag either. I think there's just nine tiles, so um, almost half the tiles are blanks or S's. It's time to get volatile because. Well, the the one caveat to this is that Benji's in really good shape in the tournament overall, and even one loss is not so painful. So he may be wary of putting himself in a position to lose by 300 points instead of 100. Uh, but, well, selfishly as a commentator, I want him to do something risky here. I think Doc, Doc might be worth a, a go. But yes, it would take uh, a truly tr true uh, fearlessness to, to pull the trigger on that. So let's see what he does. Yeah, so Doc DOC obviously takes um, a K, which is actually already, I think has already been played, right? He has it at the start of the game. Uh, but it also takes an O and a U, so Doco and Doku, as well as the S. Um, and there actually are no, uh, no O's left, I'm seeing, to... Uh, ben, but there is one U unseen to him. So he would actually need to avoid both blanks, both S's, and a U. There's just five out of the nine tiles currently still in the bag, which actually Matthew doesn't have any of those tiles. So if he does something like Doc, um, it would be a very inspired play because it's going to be pretty much un uh, unblockable. Um, but just because there are so many uh, O's, or so, much, so many uh, U's, S's, and blanks, I don't think he's going to do that. He's going to play Koti. And go for some score. Maybe wait for another opportunity to to uh, open up the board. Yeah, he's throwing in the towel there, effectively. I think because, um, well, I shouldn't say that. He keeps himself in range where if he has an outstanding draw, maybe he could draw a bingo to the I mm. or yeah. even to the to the K on the board. Uh, and he has that is an outstanding draw indeed. So we're we're not done yet, folks. He's picked uh, an S and a blank here. Yeah, I mean, that narrows down the opportunity or or, let, or adds more chances that he's going to just fish up one tie on DO because now the S's are now sitting on his rack and one blank is sitting on his rack. He's uh, kind of 
uh, got those. And I don't know if there's any kind of nine letter words through the P and the O of Plu, of, uh, Plu and Ood, or the L and the O potentially. Um, those are uh, very, uh, no, no, they're, they're so reasonable options, but they're really the only options uh, playable, unless you can end the bingo with an I of Fikey in the middle of the board. Um, they're really the only ways you can do something unless he opens up the board. But with a blank still unseen to Ben, um, you kind of don't really want to do that. But uh, the longer he waits, the more chance that Matthew will pick it up. So he's going to have to make something happen. Um, looks like they just stopped the clock to kind of go over the scores. Um, but yeah, with they're just uh, yeah they're just double checking retinoid. Um, but yeah, he needs to make something happen real soon because there's the tiles left in the bag. There are only five yeah five tiles left in the bag currently. Oh, and D in chat has actually found the bingo on Benji's rack. Oh yes. Oh my goodness. Oh man, I was looking there, but yeah, misspoken. Wow. Yeah, very, very good, uh, very, very good spot there. Um, only problem is that it does open up the triple, um, and Matthew might be able to cash that in if he ends up picking up the other blank um, in due course. And it doesn't necessarily score too much because it doesn't really hit anything, um, which is a problem. But again, the bingo is probably better than nothing at this stage. But yeah, what would you do with uh, in Matthew's spot here? He's looking um, <laughs> with the tiles he has. Okay, so he's looking at a bag uh, of blank, blank, E E I M N P S S S U. So he's looking at a bag with 12 unseen tiles, two blanks, and three S's. Five of the 12 tiles are those. <laughs> so it's very unorthodox uh, looking pool uh, unseen to Matthew right now. But again, there's no real places to play any S's or, or blanks at the stage. So he might just try and. Um, he could easily just try and play something long and try and play a four tiles potentially um, and maybe go for those S's and blanks himself and uh, try and finish the game sooner since he's going into this uh, move here with a 36 point advantage. Right, but if he wastes too much, uh, if he plays something too speculative, then Benji can just play Mies, M-I-S-E and X-I-S for, for 36 points, uh, which is... Uh, what, what is, is, are these scores accurate? Is this Benji's true deficit? Uh, yes, the score is accurate right now as we, as we look at it as a 36 point differential. So that covers the entire uh, gap. So uh, Matthew could be in a lot of trouble here. I was going to suggest something like Merlon, uh, given uh, our emphasis on nine letter words, he could play Merlon through the LO and play off four tiles, try to draw a blank of his own and gum up the works on any of these uh, speculative eights and nines. But he he could, uh, if he doesn't score enough, he could just get out outrun here. So Kowati by, by Benji looking really, really sharp, actually, not getting seduced by playing something too fishy and just um, relying instead on uh, just trying to cut the margin and draw some, draw into some good letters. So looking looking like he's got a real chance here yeah i mean merlon only scored yep uh, he's, he's playing fermi actually which does a probably a slightly better job of than merlon um yes. 20, 14 points um getting rid of the f and the m uh he could he, i mean he also could have played something like divi um through the i of egypt and saluting which would also block the s uh s spot or mize which is what uh, you mentioned earlier that ben can play but this is a very smart play here. Um, four of the five tiles in the bag is going to are going to be Matthews. Um, so he's hoping to pick out some of the blanks and S's and hopefully be able to defend any kind of one tile fish that Ben may uh, end up playing right now. But we'll see if Matthew ends up um, ends up picking up the blank. And he does pick he up the blank. Up a, a blank and it. an S, yeah. And the S as well. So he ends up getting those tiles. So he should be well equipped to uh, defend any kind of one tile uh, fish or uh, opening fish that Ben may play uh, on this next move. And that's probably the argument for why uh, I'm vacillating back and forth as a commentator, but I'm, you know, I'm not playing, so I'm allowed to do that. 
<laughs> that, that would be the argument for why um, something fishier like dock could have been uh, worth doing. You kind of have to strike when the iron is hot. And uh, the longer you wait to create an opening, the, the better your opponent's rack probably is by the time that opening gets created because we're constantly grooming our racks as we play. We're constantly improving the letters that we have. So uh, as it turns out, had he opened things a couple turns ago, it could have gotten very, very tricky. Um, but he could still open productively here. So um, I think the best thing I personally see is anything to the left of RE. Uh, it could be REM, it could be REI. Uh, and the the challenge for Matthew is going to be how to block uh, productively without giving anything back. Because um, he could play something like VIS, VIS, and Rios, but then the V is still exposed. Or uh, maybe REM is better for that reason, because... To block, Matthew is going to have to play something. Uh, yeah, he can actually just play something. Have to get more creative. Yeah. Yeah, he can just play something like Van to the right of Fermi, which will actually block off that top part of the board with the V. So that's still definitely. Um, I say not necessarily easy, but with the V unseen as well, it definitely makes things a bit easier for Matthew to block the board up a little bit. Um, so I think I would still expect. Um, I still expect Matthew to be able to see those kind of things um, at this stage uh, if Rem um, at the top of the board, R-E-M, just dropping the M there, um, does get played. Um, you should be able to use that blank effectively to just see out the game at this stage. Yeah, not not to harp on about this, but... And, uh, yeah, so Benji's decided to cash in some some points i don't know if he has a real way of of winning from here but um but it's not impossible actually if if matthew had missed the blank and the s or something like that then uh the other letters on matthew's rack the puv are really pretty pretty hard to do much with so i i can see what benji was thinking by making this decision and it for the tournament at, uh, as a whole it keeps his spread in in good shape so it seems like a very fair decision yeah so um actually um the engine is saying to play van v-a-n which is what would, would we actually suggested to play if rem was played at the top of the board just dropping the m because this leaves a uh, dups d-u-p-s um parallel to uh the two o's of oud or uh next to Eowyn on the on the middle left part of the board making rep and rios so this guarantees an out and two uh, and you kind of actually um i think all the other a lot of the other uh, players either give away too many points to begin with or doesn't give him an easy out and two so i think that's the reason why that is actually um uh, simulating very very well but yeah matthew so quite rightly uh, just going through the motions of making sure that whatever he comes up with um, wins the game first and foremost. Um, and just looking at the standings also, um, he actually does have the lowest spread out of the top eight players currently. So he's just uh, currently just being a master of just getting over the line first in all of these games. Um, so yeah, as long as he keeps doing that, then you'll stay in the lead. So what he needs to do, just not um, come up with one of the many losing plays that you could potentially play in this situation. You just don't want to get stuck with any of these big tiles at the end. And with Ben having a blank uh, on hand, he could potentially um, go out in the next turn. So he needs to needs to uh, make sure that he he, uh, he blocks those opportunities or is aware of them. Yeah, when the tournament's all over, uh, everyone remembers who won or lost. No one remembers your spread. So... Sure. Uh, yeah, a lesson in uh, not uh, not being too greedy and just stitching up the wins as Matthew's doing. This is the importance of having a lot of time left on your clock uh, going into the end game. I mean, he's got to look through all of the uh, possible options here. Um, and I guess why Van also scores well is because um, uh, Sims well because it actually blocks, uh, I think, an outplay. 
he has. He has, he has seven. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah he's got, maybe he's got multiple words there, but he can play something like Dien, D-I-E-N-E, next to the F-E-R of Fermi. So this is the spot, I think, that maybe the only spot that he can actually out, uh, make an outplay. So he, uh, that's actually the spot where he needs to go. Yeah, I mean, again, you have to be very sure that uh, you're not missing any kind of five-type outplay next to Oud, oh, the, the two O's there, um, that Ben has on his rack, or anywhere else on the board, or even any kind of miracle play through the, the second S of Mises. Um, okay, so he plays, what is that? So is that Vids, I guess? Wow. Is that a winning, is that a losing play? But it gives back end dive to go to go out. I think it's I think it's still enough. Something yeah, something like that was scored twenty points, and he gives back ten on his rack. So yeah, it's a five point victory for Matthew. Again, just doing enough to get over the line. And again, uh, any I always say any winning play at the end of the game is the best play. You don't want to uh, mess this mess this game up um, in any kind of silly fashion. But yeah, that's, it looks like it's that's a five it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, it's, it's the game is done, and it's a three ninety five, three ninety win in favor of Matthew O'Connor.